Tim, how are you? Sir? Yeah, you know, it's a Tuesday. Let's uh, do it. It is a Tuesday. And for Apple, it's an all, all-time high Tuesday. Stock's up, what, 2 and 3%. It's amazing. It got me thinking. A lot of it was up predicated on the news that, you know, Apple's going to start making their own chips and maybe you're going to leave Intel out there in the ether. And it got me thinking about, you know, great bands, you know, the great bands of all time. And Rolling Stones is Mick Jagger. But as right. you would correctly say, I mean, the heart of that band is Keith. Give me a couple other bands that everybody talks about, you know, the front man being the band, but the, the soul, the engine, the force is who? There, there's, no, there's no question about that the Stones are not anyone without Keith Richards. Um, not sure how we got here, but let's keep um, – look, Smitty, uh, Stephen Tyler gets the fanfare, but Joe Perry, bro. Um, you know, I, I, I think there's no Smitty without Joe Perry. Um, I, this is a little weird, but, you know, Jovi doesn't do it without Richie Zambora. I mean, if you th listen to those those harmonies on some of their most uh, powerful ballads and whatnot, that they, they don't make it without Zambora, and he's playing lead guitar. So, I mean, I, I think you know, there's there's a couple examples. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about um, Michael Anthony. And yeah, Van I mean, Halen without Tom Morland was talking Michael about Anthony. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the the Anthony harmonies are. I mean, you, you don't, when you hear running with the devil, man, you're not, you're not fired. You're, yeah, you're fired up by Eddie, but I mean, there's no question that those harmonies take, They're take much farther. So, and I'll tell uh, you how we got there. We got yeah. there because, you know, is Apple going to be Apple without Intel inside? And we're going to find out, I guess. I mean, that's, oh, that's how, how we, we got, got there. there. I mean, nice. Try to pay attention. I know it's a Tuesday. But the move in Apple today, does it make sense? You're talking about a company now, I think the market cap is $1.4 trillion. I mean, the stock is, at, I, I think it traded down to 240 in the depths of March. Now it's, you know, 343, I think it closed. Does this make sense to you? Well, it, 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 it makes sense relative to, think about where the valuation of the overall market is in the S&P, which is trading at 21, 22 times. Um, you know, Apple historically, should Apple get a premium multiple to the market? I, I think absolutely. Um, so we've struggled at times with how much uh, Apple has pulled forward in terms of their valuation on uh, what we know is this services uh, growth and, and this uh, you know, recurring revenue stream that's been part of the re-rating. And we talk about a hybrid multiple on the stock, which is, uh, I, I think, 22 or 23 times. And, and that's because services are 25 or 26 times. And then the hardware is probably 15 or 16 times. So, you know, I, I think based upon the market that we have today relative to the, the, the other moves in the market, um, outside of Google, which I, obviously has a headwind or two based upon the DOJ and some of the regulatory, uh, I think Apple, Apple's probably worth it. And I, I know it's, it's a bit crazy, um, but, but it, it has been consolidating somewhere around that you know, the, the, those old highs. I mean, it's not like it just shot here overnight. It, it took some time to get here. So um, I, I, I don't think you need to chase Apple. I don't think it gets away from you. Um, and, and I, I want to make set the record straight. I, I think probably from 285 up, uh, certainly up to here, I, I've, been, I, I've been cautious, if not saying, uh, I'll sit this one out. So I'm not, you know, I, I can tell you for the last 40 bucks on Apple, um, I've been a bystander. So, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't know um, how you feel about that, but, uh, um, you know, I, I think can't you, get no satisfaction I you make, no, Nice. Well, I see what you did there. I think you make great points. I, what I'll say is this, you know, as much as people say own this stock, don't trade it, and I understand what that means intuitively, and I get it. When a stock's at its all-time high, it makes sense. But embedded in those all-time highs, have been moves of pretty significant magnitudes in the, in the fall of 18, you know, that this stock went from 225 to I think 150 over the course of a couple of weeks. And then obviously we saw recently the stock go from 325, which at the time was an all time high down to 240, seemingly in the blink of an eye. So Apple does give you opportunities. And my sense is it's going to give you another opportunity. The first one I think is in the form of that 325 level, the previous, all-time high, but that 290 level, 285, 290 level, which is where it was when reported earnings a couple of weeks ago, makes sense for a number of different reasons. Now, it's a, it's a, it's a, look, it's it's the champion stock of the market, and and with that, um, I, this is a, this is a controversial one, but 
Uh, everybody loves Freddie Mercury, but I don't know if Queen is Queen without Brian May. You know, um, I mean, that guy, yeah, okay, he, you he, can stop, a, he, you can he, stop he, right he crushes there. that axe. You can what, stop what, right there. What, what are you talking no, you about, stop. man? You can, you can absolutely. Brian May is a fine guitar player. Fine. But the Queen is Freddie Mercury. Without Freddie Mercury, there is no Queen. Stop. That, that's Full a band. Stop. That's a rock and that's a rock and roll band. And I've got one more for you. And I think this is probably less controversial. But but obviously, uh, you know, Roger Waters gets a lot of credit for 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 the Wall and Pink Floyd. That's David Gilmore's band, as far as I'm concerned. I'm a Gilmore guy, um, not a Gilmore girl. Uh, and and I'll tell you what, I, I think. Um, yeah, this is this is uh, a, a great conversation because rock and roll tends to sometimes hide the talent that's in the band uh, from the guy that just decides to get the start. Okay, it's kind of like you and me right now. So you want <laughs> you, you want you want a controversial statement? Here it goes. Pink Floyd is not in my top fifty bands of all time, and the only song worth listening to is "Shine On You Crazy Diamond." And the only good part about that song is the first five minute instrumentals. There you go. But if you like those instrumentals, you like all their stuff. Although, you know, you, you're, I, I don't know. If there's a band that is defined by their sound as much as any band, Rush. even more so than Queen. It's Rush. It's, oh, okay. All right. So you're going with like Alex Lifeson over Geddy Lee? No, I what mean, I'm is, saying is, that, is, is it, Rush sucks as well. So in, in the, in the sucks them category. Stop. T time out. Clash, time out. All right. Rush. Just take, take it back a notch. This has been a very, very painful time for Rush fans, and, and it should be. Um, I think you need to take it back a notch. Um, I, you know, to me, you're the guy who uh, had the predictable Zeppelin poster on his wall in high school um, with, with the, the double-neck Jimmy Page sure. guitar, which, which, by the way, um, there's no need for the double-neck guitar. Let's, let's be clear about that. That was just showboating, whether it was Joe Walsh, uh, or Don Felder, I should say, who played the who played the double neck Don guitar Felder in Hotel California for the Eagles. Don, Don Felder, who's from Jacksonville, who's from Jacksonville, by the way. Um, I, there's no need for the double neck guitar. It's arrogant, uh, and I think um, as we head out today, I think I think you have been a little bit today. Okay, so there's there's no need for the double neck guitar. Then I would push back and say, I mean, Charlie Watts is one of the great drummers of all time. He's got like five things in front of him. Neil Peart, everybody says he's the greatest drummer in the history of mankind. He's got things all around he him. Is. is that excessive? No, 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 no. Is he is the well? greatest drummer. He was the greatest drummer in the history uh, of, of mankind. And I, I don't think that's up for debate. Uh, maybe Bonzo's in there. Uh, Keith Moon's in there in the conversation. I, I certainly love Keith Moon. Um, and there are a, a handful of people that are on the, out, the outer circle. But, um, you know, with, with, with that, I mean, uh, you do – it's 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 rush time. It's rush time. I'm I'm gonna go limelight it right now. Go do your thing. We'll talk tomorrow.